Now the another problem is that when the switch will forward a broadcast message here, it will forward it again here, and this switch will forward it again here. As a result, my broadcast messages will keep on revolving between these switches. They'll keep on moving between these switches, making a broadcast loop. To avoid these loops, we have the protocol spanning tree protocol. Spanning tree prevents the loop in layer two networks by creating a loop free topology. How it creates a loop free topology? It creates that by electing a root bridge and blocks one of the interface for avoiding broadcast loops. Now, when it is blocked, I can say my traffic will only flow in this direction. That's it. So it will not revolve between these three devices. This brings us to the final question. What is subnetting? Very important. And I have seen a lot many engineers getting confused there. What is subnetting and why it is important? Subnetting is basically the process of dividing a large network into, we can say, smaller subnetworks. And this helps us in saving the IP addresses and also ensuring that the broadcast traffic uh, is not going beyond a certain limit and uh, makes the management easy, security implementation easy. So you are breaking down a bigger network into smaller parts. For example, let's say you have a requirement of uh, 2000 IP addresses. Okay, and you go and get a class B network. Now class B network can be anything like 150.10.0.0 slash 16. If we talk about the total number of addresses in this network, it will be 2 raised to the power 16, which is going to be 65,536. If I don't use subnetting and use the complete network for the requirement of 2,000 addresses, I am wasting somewhere around 63,536 addresses, right? Which is not good. Subnetting allows us to break it down into smaller chunks. What I can do? I can break it down into multiple smaller chunks, and one of the chunk can be used for this requirement of 2000 addresses. That's how subnetting helps us in reducing the wastage and managing network 